yeah so today we're doing the three and a half mile cliff walk um she starts right over there and uh heads on around to the point uh down around the breakers and some other uh, mansions and heads down at the south end so it's a beautiful day and uh yeah it's a perfect day for a three and a half mile walk it's the natural road i don't Ground is shaking, you found a roar, wouldn't worry, it's just a star. so bad had to come back and reshoot it so today we're gonna to walk the three and a half miles again and uh, yeah just receive the site so why don't you join me all right here's the initial storyboard at the beginning of the trail um, as you can see we are right here and we're gonna walk all the way here see the breakers which is pretty famous come around here and then walk all the way around to the cliff walk south end it says it takes about two and a half hours um, but yeah it's a three and a half mile walk, so let's do this. A lot of these signs around here. Caution, stay on the paved path, steep cliffs, high risk of injury. That's what I was about saying. So a lot of times in the morning, uh, you can see a lot of walkers and runners and, and uh, yeah, just a lot of tourists. I think I saw like a sign that said one and a half million people visit the cliff walk every year. That's a lot of people, but right now, this time of season, it's not too bad. I can't see, there's nobody here with me on this section of the trail, but when you get closer to the breakers and stuff like that and all the mansions, it gets a little busier. Um, parking's a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful day for a, for a nice walk. And uh, yeah, let's just keep doing this. Here we have the famous 40 steps or 44 steps. Um, yeah, a lot of people come here for the cliff walk. Originally, these steps were built in the uh, 1830s, 1840s of wood. But obviously, as you can tell, wood wouldn't do so good out here. So through lots of donations, uh, they rebuilt them. But yeah, when you're here, you gotta come down here and check it out. You got the 40 steps of Newport. The views down here are pretty cool too. Can't beat that. All right, let's go back up these 40 steps. We still got a long ways to go. That way is north, south. Here's where you gotta take a detour. I think last March, I think it was, 2022, you had a big portion of the cliff walk that uh, kinda slid into the ocean, kinda reclaimed itself. But, uh, so now you gotta walk up here, take a left. It's kinda diverts over there by the breakers. But uh, yeah, last year, kind of a slide, but no big deal. Still a cool walk. So kind of walking into it right now, you can see that we are here right next to Salva Regina uh, University and right here in front of this building of Okra Court. You can see that building right there. Now one of the next stops we're gonna make right here is Okra Court. Uh, this is along the cliff walk and this was built for another tycoon, uh, another New York tycoon. Uh, this building right here was designed by the same guy that did the, um, the breakers, which we'll pass in a little bit. Uh, Mr. Hunt, I believe his name. Don't quote me on his first name, but yeah, in 1947, this building was donated to Sisters of Mercy, which formed the uh, Salva Regina University. And I believe 
This is the only building they had when they started. It had like 58 female students or something like that. But yeah, it's quite an impressive home. It's one of the largest here in the Breakers too, as well. But also, I believe this film, this uh, um, home was uh, shown in the movie True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, Oak Rick Court. So <laughs> let's keep going. Quite impressive. You have a commotion, and that's okay. We're in motion, I can feel the sway. There's nothing to fear, my friend. Oh no, it's the natural road I don't. When the ground is shaking, you can thunder or roar. Wouldn't worry, it's just a start. past the breakers um, right over there got a couple surfers out there trying to break some, catch some waves here haven't seen that before but hey man there's waves they got to be surfed right um, but yeah we're gonna continue on I think the next one we come up to is the the rose cliff which is right over there but uh, it's a good walk so far man it's a beautiful day can't beat it um, right now it's kind of late winter right now so it's not the lush greeny where you expect from all these uh, Newport mansions but I can only tell you but here we were in the summer and it was pretty nice so uh, definitely worth a visit here so good walk beautiful walk beautiful day can't beat it but they're pretty flat rocks. It's not too bad at all. Kind of nice to break up the terrain a little bit. So you can't really see much with all the trees there and the fences going on, but we just passed the rose cliff. You can kind of see it right there. Um, it was built in 1902 for a silver mining Harris and a shipping tycoon. But yeah, lots of movies were filmed there. I think Great Gatsby was, True Lies, um, 27 Dresses. But yeah, there in the Rose Cliff has the biggest ballroom here in Newport. So yeah, it's a lot of construction going on right now and renovation going on. You can see up there, but. Yeah, gonna keep on trucking. So, I believe this is it right here. This is the, uh, the Beechwood, uh, built in 1857. It says uh, it's owned by Larry Allison, Ellison, the uh, founder of Oracle. Um, I'm just kind of reading from here, but uh, the mansion has been extensively renovated to display Mr. Ellison's 18th and 19th century European art. In 1881, a grandson of John Jacob Astor bought the cottage for his wife, the queen of the 400 social set. Their son drowned on the Titanic. Hmm. Yeah. The Beechwood, 1857. Coming up next, you can see is the, the, the tea house. But, yeah. I think on the front of this, you can see there's a lot of work going on the front of this. But, I'm not even sure if it looks the same. <laughs> but, uh, in fact, there's a sign that said the Beechwood, but it doesn't look like this picture I have from this, uh, this tour guide I got. So, but still, pretty cool. 
All right, I'm gonna have to use my notes on this one. But behind me, you can see the marble house. Um, it's another one of the famous, uh, I think it's the Vanderbilt house. Let me look at my notes real quick. Um, yeah, it's built in 1892 with 500,000 cubic feet of marble for the grandson, for the grandson of Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt of shipping and railroad as a 39th birthday gift for his wife, Alva. Um, yeah, but you can see the famous thing here is the tea house. Uh, this tea house was built a tea house, the Chinese tea house, and held rallies for women's right to vote. So, it's pretty neat, huh? Pretty good views from here. Most of the time, I've done this, this walk a couple times, but this is where it starts to thin out. The crowds mostly stay on uh, that side of the breakers over there, but um, I think this is the best part of the tour, actually. But yeah, we're going to a tunnel. It goes under the tea house. I'm not sure how the uh, video will turn out. Pretty short tunnel. Another tunnel. This is where the uh, cliff walk becomes a little more less unpaved, but still pretty easy to go across. Um, not difficulty. As you can see, the, the stones are pretty, pretty flat, pretty, pretty much up together, but definitely worth it. This portion of the uh, the cliff walk has some of the lesser known. Most of these over here are privately owned still, but. Um, uh, it's still pretty cool to see. Um, they just haven't been open for tours or anything like that, but it's the views over here that you want to see the most. It's going to kind of go around the edge up there and uh, come around on the, the south side of the cliff walk. So, but yeah. A little more on easy ground over here, huh? But then it comes back to a sidewalk for a little bit. But then you can see up there becomes uh, uneven rocks again. So we're coming to the more rocky point of the uh, cliff walk. As you can see, it's less, less, um, I guess, paved. There's a little pavement here, but um, more rocky. I think that's why there's a house actually here called Rocky Point. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool. <laughs> this is actually my favorite part of the whole cliff walk right now. But um, yeah. gotta watch where you're going so can't really talk that much so but uh yeah it's a good point it's a good uh it's a good walk so far 
Uh, just out here, you just gotta be careful. Lots of loose rocks um, and boulders. Lots of boulders. Lots of good-sized boulders too. Yeah, boulders. All right, let's go. Yeah. As you can see, not much pavement over here. Just uh, stones. Stones and rocks. And pretty much, I guess, they're the same thing. But anyway, yeah. This is the cliff walk on this portion. You gotta keep an eye on where you're going. You're gonna twist an ankle out of here. Make sure you got some good uh, non skid shoes on. I prefer hiking shoes, but it wouldn't be too bad. It's not bad enough for running shoes or good walking shoes. Just make sure you got a good grip on them, though. Not a bad view. So this is good spot as any to take a little, little drink break, have a little cliff bar action. And uh, yeah, I think we're about to the point up there. So I to turn around and, and uh, head back the other way, but I think it'd be right now a good spot to uh, sit down, take a break and enjoy the view. All right, nice little break, time to Get back on going. Uh, I think we've been going for about, it's only been about two hours, but obviously I've been stopping a lot to uh, take some video and pictures, but yeah, definitely. I think if you just kind of hightailed it through the entire thing, it'd be about two and a half hours. Um, but yeah, I'm stopping to look at a lot and take a lot of footage and fly the drone. So definitely taking a little bit longer than it normally would. Yeah, most of these are privately owned. Still can't beat the view though. All right, that's a good spot. All right, here we go. Got my uh, all-terrain shoes on. That's probably the toughest spot so far here. You can see that they've tried to, as the weather and stuff like that, they've tried to keep it, keep it uh, safe. You really don't want to walk down there, but see it was kind of poured roughly uh, here. Kind of keep a sidewalk easier to walk. Not paved or anything, just poured. Sounds like the uh, tide's starting to come in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, good walk. Beautiful day for a walk too, can't beat it.
Yeah, most of these homes over here are all private homes. We reached the end. I'm not sure if this would be it or if that would be the, the tip part, but it's pretty good here. All right, here comes a little more pay for a little bit, but yeah. It's pretty cool here when the tide come in and the waves pulling the, the rocks back in. It's pretty cool, the sound. It's kind of like an ASMR type thing. <laughs> But yeah, this is definitely the less traveled part. You see one or two people over here, not like we over the mansions part where you see there's quite a few um, people walking and running. But all right, up here you got this uh, this home called Lands End. I think it was built in like 1865. Anyway, I'm not sure if she lived here or knew somebody lived here, but somehow connected to Julia Ward. Now, Julia Ward's a lady that wrote the lyrics to Battle Hymn of the Republic. And in 1870, um, she started Mother's Day. Um, but anyway, hey, if you wrote the lyrics to Battle Hymn of the Republic, still pretty cool in my book, right? Anyway, later on, uh, Edith Wharton, who wrote The Age of Innocence, I think it was around eight, 1921, she owned the house. Um, but she didn't like it here. She didn't like the Gilded Age, all the mansions from the Breakers to the Vanderbilt to all the, you know, all that stuff over there. She just wasn't a fan of it. So she left here and built a place over in Lenox, Massachusetts. But uh, yeah, Land's End. Somehow connected to the lyrics of Battle Hymn of the Republic. That's all I need to know. America, right? Pretty cool. It doesn't look like that old, huh? It's like a nice, Summer cottage. Anyway, continuing on. You start to see the the roads again over here. A little more paved sidewalk over here. So behind me used to be a private home of an architect named Pope. Um, but I guess with the changes in times, the wars, the depression, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, this building built in the 20s, I think it was, no, 1929, was actually changed to condos in the 80s. Kind of, kind of sad thing. But uh, as you can see from the storyboard, we started here, we walked all the way around, all the way around, rough point, lands in. We're here at the waves right now. So you are here, so got just this little portion right here to go. According to the legend, it's modern. All right, let's go. Some rules of the road. Cool. Yeah, this is way easier. <laughs> this is the other side of the waves. Yeah, like I said earlier, I guess with time and let's say taxes and you know. All the other stuff with the family separating. Um, the Gilded Age was done. A lot of the homes that were here on uh, Newport were either demolished or they burned down or turned into museums or, like in Salva Regina's case, turned into schools. This place, the Waves, was turned into condos. So, but still impressive to say the least. I'm missing the trail. That's why I'm procrastinating right now. <laughs> Tra trail actually goes this way. I'm not even following the rules of the road. Staying on trail. There we go. 
trail marker, not a trail marker. Here we go. I'm not sure how many of the uh, 1.5 million people actually come to this side of the cliff walk. Right there, I think it's the best part. I think they call that up there, uh, Rejects Beach. Um, I have to find something, but the only thing I can think of is, if you're not polite society, you're a reject. So probably all the workers and stuff like that. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a sign up here, but um, <laughs> that's what I'm going with. <laughs> Rejects Beach. Um, yeah, you go swim over there. We'll stay over here. Up. See, we're staying on the path. You're doing good. Huh. Another sign, about 20 feet down here. Just in case you veered off this path here. There's a sign there. There's a sign there. Just to keep you on track. Head you to. Rejects Beats over there. So this is a good place as any. Um, hey, if you like this content, um, we doing this quite a bit. Got a lot of uh, adventures going on and uh, some day trips, some hikes, some historical sites. But yeah, if you like it, Please hit that subscribe button. And if you really liked it, hit that like button. Um, let me know in a comment how I do. Uh, any changes you'd like to see. Kind of new to this, so still working on all my uh, all my techniques and being in front of the camera. Still kind of weird. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Let's finish out this hike. Well, there's the sign. Cliff walk edges, 250 feet. All right, let's finish this off. Nice little beach here. Bet this place is hopping in the summer though. End of cliff walk. Exit this way to Bellevue Ave. Oh my goodness. End it with soft sand. And that's the end of it. But yeah, up there is Bellevue. Well, this is Bellevue. Go up there, makes a left. Head back towards the breakers and all the, the mansions, Marble House. And uh, according to this, this is Bailey's Beach right there, which we just came out of. And on my map, it shows Rejects Beach is the public beach. Bailey's Beach is the uh, private beach. Hmm. All right, now we know. Well, that's going to do it for, for us today from uh, Newport here doing the cliff walk. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Um, definitely a lot of uh, adventures coming up. Um, I'm not sure where the next one's going to be. It may be Battle Road or the Mohawk Trail. I'm not sure. But hey, definitely subscribe below if you want to keep up. Um, I'm going to try and do this weekly. Um, got lots of uh, travel adventures coming up. And uh, yeah, but that's going to do it from 
Cliff Walk here in Newport, Rhode Island. Thank you. So you couldn't really see the uh, Marble House from the uh, from the Cliff Walk side, but this is the uh, this is the front of the uh, Marble House, built in 1892.